Today we are going to be discussing the top 5 underrated tools for 3D artists inside of DaVinci Resolve. I think that these tools can scale your business and help you improve the quality of your content while you're producing things from Blender and Unreal Engine. So let's hop straight into it. Here I have a clip of some personal brand identity video that I'm working on in Blender. And this clip is about four seconds long and I would like it to be eight and I would like it to be slow motion. And this plays nice and quickly like this. If we come into the right side panel and then scroll down to the bottom and click retime process and select optical flow. Optical flow is a frame interpolation and AI tool that allows you to create new frames in between the existing frames and blends them together either with frame blending or AI to create a slow motion or higher frame rate for that clip. This then allows us to extend the clip's length and speed and have smooth looking footage without having to do a lot of extra work or re-rendering. So I'm then going to change the motion estimation to speed warp. And a good note to know is speed warp is only available on the paid version of DaVinci Resolve, but there is these other five options are available in the free edition of DaVinci Resolve. And then we're going to right click on our clip and change clip speed. Now what happens is when we change the speed from 100 to 50, this will basically extend the length of the clip, drag it out, and now I'm gonna click on standard better just so that you free DaVinci Resolve users can see the effect here. And then if we click playback, we can see that it is playing at half the speed and still looks pretty dang good. Now there are sometimes some artifacts that appear and that is when using speed warp is really nice, but that is how you create frame interpolation or retiming your video. Next on the list, if we delete this and bring in our second clip, this is blue cylinders that I have rendered in Blender and they just shift back and forth a little bit and move around. And what we're going to do first is we're going to explore the clip attributes and the super scale function. If we change this none to 2x, and this feature is only available in the paid version of DaVinci Resolve, then this will scale our footage with AI, it'll upscale it by two times. You can also do this by three and four, but I have found the best results generally only come from two. Then all you need to do from there once you upscale your footage is go into File, Project Settings, and then change your timeline resolution to the next highest resolution. In my case would be 4K. I'm going to not do that because another thing we can explore is the third feature instead, which is in the color tab. We're going to learn about the color warper. Usually you will see the curves custom page, which then if you go one tab over you, we have the color warper. And this color warper basically is like a hue and saturation node, but it is formatted in this hexagon shape and makes it really easy to adjust. This little flare right here represents where your color hues are currently in your video file. We can grab the route that they are closest to and use this and drag it across this circular spectrum. And we can now see we have purple cylinders or we can move it over and we can have some nice saturated red ones. The nice thing about this means that if you are rendering out colorways and you just need some general colors, like this one, I wanted a blue, red, green, and then some desaturated colors. This made it really easy to adjust the colors without having to do a lot of extra work. If we drag this closer to the center, this will also desaturate it, which produces really nice results if you want like a white pass as well, and you can adjust that in the curves as well. There we go, now we've got some white ones. So that is super nice. If we come back to our edit tab, we are going to now explore the fourth feature that I would like to cover today. For our fourth tool, I'm going to bring in some previous YouTube footage I have made for a recent video, and I'm just going to cut a section of it for this example, and then delete the rest. I'm going to bring this up, and then I'm going to control C, bring my cursor to the end, control V, and then this will allow me to bring it below my footage. Now, if we track over it, I need to mask myself out, for instance. And with this magic mask, then if I take this plus and then click on the person, better, and then bring up the smart refine, I can draw a single line over my body 
and it will automatically mask everything out. And then if I track it forwards and backwards, starting from the middle of your footage is usually a good idea to get tracks more accurate both ways. From there, we can use this to lens blur the background behind me. So if I click pause, just so that we can use what we've got, if I right click and add an alpha output in my, my color grading nodes, then once I connect this blue square to the blue dot, then I can come back to my editing tab. And I just need to know which clip I was adjusting, which looks like is my top one, which is what we wanted. Then I can take this and add a lens blur to the bottom one and you can control the blur of your background. It's probably good to keep this to a minimum, but it's good to add just a tiny bit of extra depth of field to your scene. And with the correct settings, you can get a really nice track and easily rotoscope yourself out or an object out very quickly inside of DaVinci Resolve. For the last tool, we're going to cover the Fusion Compositor. Not actually go into depth on how to use it, but just that it is there and show some of the things you can do with it. So I'm going to access a previous reel that I made that you may have seen on YouTube, link in the cards right there. And here I used Fusion to add this explosion to my scene. And this was super helpful because I can just build out a series of nodes similar to Blender and Unreal. And these nodes will perform a specific function. And if we look at my beginning footage, there was nothing there. And then this is the default explosion that I added. Then I was able to color correct it. And then I was able to add a color curves to bring in the blacks to the correct level and is able to scale it, add a directional blur for the image, another blur to just break up the details, and then I was able to track this, and you can see if I go into the track, I was able to select a part of the earth and track it forwards and backwards, and then I was able to draw some corner pins to paste this wonderful explosion inside of the scene, and then we get this as our final output. So this is super helpful for adding things to your shots, whether it's 2D elements in your 3D renders or compiling different plates or passes from your renders together. There are plenty of tutorials on YouTube on how to use these tools as well. And I hope that these five tools, which are optical flow retiming, upscaling, color warping, fusion compositor, and using the magic mask with lens blur to adjust your focus are super helpful, and I hope that they're useful to you. If you like this content, like and subscribe. Follow me for more on Instagram as well. And until next time, create more than you consume.